century. It's brought them from isolation into the spotlight, a story truly stranger than fiction. Back to the beginning. Roughly one mile away and a universe away is where the secret history of the wolf pack unfolded. In the gritty chaos of the Lower East Side for more than a decade, behind these windows, almost no one knew they existed. Locked away, unseen, unheard, unknown. This was their only view of the world. Their neighbors never saw them. I've been here all my life. We didn't know they existed. Six rooms, six brothers, 14 years locked inside with their mother by their father who kept them from the world trapped in the confines of their tiny apartment. If he put us in a room, we have to stay there until he says you can go. With no friends and no freedom, the boys have just one escape, what would be their salvation. Movies, thousands of movies. As far back as I can remember anything, like as far back as I can remember loving my mom, I remember movies. They were like a door into another world. In many ways, movies saved your lives. I think, in a way, movies, they shaped us who we are. They memorized them, reenacted them. We got a playground here. Until one day, fantasy becomes reality. It's now or never. When life inside became too much to bear, and one son found the courage to break free. My heart pounded so hard. I was like, there's no going back now. Tonight, a story about the power of film, of imagination, and the Wolfpack's astonishing journey to freedom. Good evening. This is a story so incredible, it seems like something out of a movie. And as you just saw, it now is. That movie, The Wolfpack, opening today. And the secrets of those young brothers finally spilling out from that apartment. And for a while, Elizabeth was one of the only people allowed through that front door. That's right, David. I really didn't know what to expect. But what I found was an intensely devoted band of brothers, one that had been kept so wary of strangers over the years that their only friends were essentially characters on a TV screen from the movies. But now everyone is going to know these boys and be inspired by their journey of survival and hope. <laughs> It's a public housing development, home to some 800 people. I am a rare visitor to one apartment on the 16th floor, where the Angulo family lives. Come on in. 22-year-old Makunda invites me in to show me the home that was his prison for 14 years. The apartment is 1,000 square feet. The largest space is this living room. That's like... It's two of me. Yes. Yeah. It is small. The apartment home to seven children and their mother, Suzanne, and their father, Oscar. He had the only key to the front door, and only he could use it. So this was always locked? Always. His father blocked the door with a tall ladder to keep intruders taller. out, and his wife and children in. And when you lift the ladder, it'd make a loud, like, <laughs> so he would know if anyone was attempting to go out. Oscar creates their own fortress of solitude. In these home videos, scenes of the strange world in which they lived, part Hare Krishna, part paranoia, Oscar's own hermit kingdom. So we had this idea of like, you know, having a big group, like our own community, our own race here. It's almost like a tribe that you have. Vishnu is the first child and only daughter, born with a rare genetic disorder. A year later came Bhagavan, and a year later, fraternal twins, Govinda and Naranya. Where did they get these names? They're Sanskrit, from the Sanskrit language. Mukunda was born next, and then the two youngest, Krishna and Jagadish. At night, the young boys slept with Suzanne, piled on top of each other on mattresses. During the day, releasing their pent-up energy, dancing, bouncing, their entire childhood homeschooled by their mother. For the six boys, recess was roller skating indoors, back and forth in that tiny hallway. But the most important lesson every day, Oscar's rules. Number one, the boy's hair was never cut. He always encouraged us to have long hair. When you have long hair, you are powerful. He was like, be a powerful person. Rule number two, 
stay inside. What did he say would happen to you if you went outside? He would say to us, so outside there's good people and there's bad people. That would always explain, you know, I'd like to keep you all here, protected. Here, there were rules about what rooms they could enter. In the apartment, there's a kitchen, a bedroom, two bathrooms, and three more rooms. But as if six rooms for nine people wasn't cramped enough, the children were forbidden from entering two of them. Makunda says it stems from his father's fear. He banned the boys from rooms that shared walls with the neighbors. He didn't want anyone to hear what we were doing or that we were laughing or he basically didn't want anyone to know we were here. That's why even one of the two bathrooms was off limits. We weren't allowed to use this one, only this one. And this one would just sit empty? Mm-hmm. Nobody yeah, used no, it? Nobody used it. Wow. Naranya, one of the twins, says the restrictions were the most extreme for their mother. She had the worst of it from all of us. She had more rules than we did. Any little thing that she did wrong was, she was like put on trial. I was very much a frightened person. We all were. He would not treat her like a happy husband with a happy wife. How did it come to this? Suzanne, who grew up in the farm fields of the Midwest, met Oscar in the exotic jungles of Peru, hiking to Machu Picchu. He really thought and acted in a much bigger way than most people. They married within months, living first in a Hare Krishna preserve, later in a van, having baby after baby. But when they ended up at the New York housing project, Oscar shut the door and pocketed the only key. So you didn't argue, no, this is silly, we're overreacting. At that time, I didn't have a lot of control about the choices that I made or could make. Suzanne had no contact with her family. Her sisters say she left no trail, no address, no phone number. We just felt there was no way of knowing. How do we find out? I mean, we had to hire a detective. No one had seen her. Suzanne was hiding in plain sight. Oscar didn't work and the family survived on welfare and the money she earned from homeschooling. All her time was spent tending to her seven children inside. It must have been deeply painful to see your kids growing up confined. Well, sometimes it was hard because I thought I wanted them to be out in the fresh air because that's what I did as a child. This is not close to where I used to live. Where the children's only view of the wonders of the world were through Suzanne's memories of the life she used to have. I've been hiking in the Himalayas, so I used to talk a lot about that. Every day I wish to be out in nature with my mom, learning about the web of life and the connection of everything. When my children were younger, we would sit and look out the window and I could compare it to the view on a mountaintop. Those big buildings might be other mountains. Instead of all the cars in the parking lot, there would be a big meadow there. It was kind of fun. It broke the monotony a little bit. Oscar would grant rare outings with more rules. They were told where to look, how far to walk, and never to interact with strangers. We would go out in the summers mostly because it was nice out. So, so. how many times a year would you go out? Sometimes one. Five. One? One, and then, yeah, then one year, not at all. And then the winter came, and we never went out in the winter. The only freedom Oscar did allow, what would become the boys' one true escape, was movies. How many hours a day would you watch these movies? All day. All day? Every day. How many movies have you seen? Let's just say over 10,000 movies. You've seen over 10,000 movies? Like, at least. With no outside friends, no outside activities, it was total immersion, an obsession. If I didn't have movies, life would be pretty boring. It makes me feel like I'm living, sort of, because it's kind of magical. Next, the power of imagination. The brothers sustaining life inside the walls, creating a world of their own by recreating the movies they love. Until the day when that's no longer enough. And one brave brother decides it's time for his own great escape. It's now or never. I'm gonna do it now. Stay with us.
2020 continues with the Wolf Pack. Here again, Elizabeth Vargas. They were six brothers locked in a cramped apartment for 14 years. Their father gave them free reign to just one thing. I don't shine shoes anymore. Movies. They were the boys' only window to the outside world, losing themselves in the wilderness of the last of the Mohicans. The streets of Sicily in The Godfather. No! No, I belong! And the gritty New York underworld in Goodfellas. I wonder about you sometimes, Henry. You may fold under questioning. <laughs> the films were more than entertainment. They were salvation. The movies taught us, like, sort of how to speak to one another. You talking to me? How you interact with another person, then have an opinion. Marvin, what do you make of all this? With hours, days, weeks, months, years to fill, they would watch their favorites again and again. The Dark Knight, Pirates of the Caribbean, Blade Runner, Taxi Driver, Apocalypse Now, Citizen Kane, No Country for Old Men, Halloween, Gone with the Wind, Sunset Boulevard, The Thing. <laughs> At some point, simply watching is not enough. Mr. White. The boys decide to become a part of the movies they love. In the confines of their tiny apartment, their imagination runs wild. Every time my fingers touch brain, I'm super glad TNT. I kind of thought, why don't we do those films? Be those characters. They painstakingly transcribe every word, spending weeks creating handwritten scripts, homemade costumes, and props. And glorious bastards. How many scenes in the movie is this? Oh, this is the whole movie. This is the whole movie? Every word that is uttered in that movie. And that's every word that's uttered in Pulp Fiction? Yes. 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 You've also gotta be kidding me. <laughs> With every line, every hand gesture, every expression memorized, they assign parts and perform. Their only audience is themselves. Scenes from Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> from Pulp Fiction. Don't be looking at me like that, right? I can feel your look. Batman. Every punch choreographed. <laughs> Makunda is the main prop master, creating costumes from anything he can get his hands on. We got an oxygen tank from No Country for Old Men. Inside, uh -huh. if you want to feel that, that is oh. little Milo tin cans. It's like a Raisin Bran or Quakers. And I would just tape it all together, get the shape, and just color all of it. That's great. When we do it, I have to get in the mind of the character to play Batman because it's a responsibility, sort of. That sounds pathetic to some people because, but to us and to our world, it is very uh, personal. Did you guys ever look out the windows at other people on the street and wonder what their lives were like? It was kind of like, uh, oh, look at that. That's a school bus. These kids are going to school, just like in the movies. As for the neighbors they never saw. We make up characters out of them. Like if we hear yelling or like loud music, we'd be like, ah, oh, that sounds a little bit like Goodfellas partying. Maybe Robert De Niro was living in there. It's, we just imagine a lot. Sort of what you miss out on, you make up in fantasy. For 14 years, they are confined. From first teeth to first words, young boys becoming young men. As they grow, the four rooms they live in grow smaller. The claustrophobia becomes stifling. It's scary to want to break out of that, that box. Then in 2009, their prison shrinks even further. Oscar, perhaps sensing his growing son's growing restlessness, covers the windows that winter with blankets, sealing off the one remaining link to the outside world. When that was happening, we couldn't even get sunlight looking out the window. I started getting a little like, all right, enough is enough. It is 2010. The tension in the tiny apartment has mounted. Oh, it starts to reach like a volcano point where something is starting to erupt. Makunda's name means giver of freedom, and one morning he wakes up determined to seize his own. It was a Saturday morning, and I just thought, you know what? I've got to do it today. It's now or never. He waits for his father to leave the apartment to buy groceries. I wouldn't dare do it when he was around. He goes to his prop closet and selects a mask to hide his face. He is frightened his father will see him on the street. The mask he chooses, Michael Myers from the movie Halloween. There's no way he would be able to recognize it as me. Right. 
He tells his brothers he is leaving. It was tense. Yes. I was pretty fearful. Fearful not, of? Not so much for his safety or if he would be okay, but for the repercussions of that. And then 15-year-old Makunda opens the front door. Down the 16 flights of stairs. And out into the air. The moment I opened the door, my heart pounded so hard. I was like, <sighs> Outside, without his father, for the first time in his life. What do I do? I'm out in the open. It's all out there. There's no going back now. He doesn't even know his own address. I'll know how to get back as long as I keep the building, our building in my sight. So you just kept looking back here, sort of mm -hmm. as your touchstone. Yes. But you kept walking. I, I did. mean. And as I recall, I knew which window was ours, and I saw my brother's. Like so you a came down cat. to this corner, mm -hmm. turned this way? I turned left, yes. Turned left. Were you nervous? Really nervous. Still wearing the Halloween mask, he goes into a bank, a supermarket. He is terrified, and terrifying to those who see him. It doesn't take long for someone to call police. What did the police say to you? And then they started asking, do you live here? Where are you from? I was always taught to never interact with any people. Mm -hmm. So I didn't say anything to them. I didn't give them any information on me. Mukunda is escorted away in an ambulance. For most, a nightmare. For Mukunda, it's his first real life adventure. I was in an ambulance for the first time. I was never in an ambulance. I was like, whoa, look at this. This is just like a movie set or something. <laughs> I'm like, they got the siren on? This is pretty wild. Because Mukunda won't speak, police think he's unbalanced. They take him to Bellevue Hospital, the psychiatric ward. What was it like being in the hospital? Fun, I have to say. Fun? It was because I interacted with, like, people for the first time. You weren't freaked to, like, out? Big thing. No, I was very curious. He spends a week at the hospital, and when he returns, there is a cataclysmic shift in the apartment. Oscar now knows he's no longer in control. Oh Basically, it was that first walk down this first sidewalk that yes. broke the this spell, way. really, over the entire family, right? It is a walk on Broom Street. Changed everything. Next, all the brothers discovering the outside world for the first time. It's like 3D, man. Very fresh out here. Yeah. And a chance encounter with a woman who will change their lives. It was like one kid, another kid, another kid, and all of a sudden it was six of them, and I ran after them. Stay with us. Twenty Twenty continues with the Wolf Pack. Once again, here's Elizabeth Vargas. After 14 years of claustrophobia and confinement, Mukunda Angulo has broken free of his father's rules, liberating his brothers who now follow. The youngest is 11, the oldest 18. While their father stays in his bedroom behind closed doors, his sons take their first steps outside their apartment without him. What were those first forays out like? Pure excitement. Pure excitement. Yeah. They are tentative at first, traveling in a pack, not going far from home. Their senses are heightened. A simple stroll is supercharged. They revel in their new freedom. Having independence feels really great if you have never had independence your whole life. Yeah. It's so powerful. You know, you feel like, I can survive. I can, I have much more confidence. I can make it. Even as they're breaking free, their lifeline remains the movies. This is like 3D, man. Very fresh out here. Yeah. In their trips out, they wear a form of armor, the suits of the cast of Reservoir Dogs. With their long hair and sunglasses, they're hard to miss. And in their first week out, New Yorker Crystal Moselle spots them and does a double take. I was just like walking down the street, and all of a sudden it was six of them, and I, I ran after them. There's like nothing I could have done. The brothers who consider movies their religion ask Crystal what she does for a living. The first person they meet and she is a movie maker. It feels like fate. We shared the same passion. It, it immediately made a connection from there. They arrange to meet, and soon the brothers invite her for dinner at their apartment. Crystal has no idea she is the first outsider ever allowed into the apartment. You're actually our first guest to be invited over. Really? Yeah. Ever? Yeah, never invited anybody over before. Why not? 
because we didn't have friends. <laughs> he had revealed to me that I was one of their first friends, and that was a huge, like, what? You didn't know that. <laughs> I was your first friend? Crystal only gradually learns about the confines of the boy's childhood. She starts documenting as they experience life on the outside for the first time. Okay. Their first bike ride. First visit to a restaurant. How's that salad? That's Makunda five years ago. Is it gross? No, it's very tasty and very chemical. Chemical? Yeah, tastes like a chemical. And perhaps most momentous, their first time to a movie theater to see Christian Bale starring in The Fighter. That's awesome. That's exciting. I play that guy in the dark night. That man begins. You had a front row seat to them experiencing the world for the first time. Yeah. What was that like? Oh, it was wonderful. They would express, oh, we, we nerve in the beach. We want to go to the beach. I said, okay, let's go. I'll follow you to the beach. At the beach, for the first time, they feel the sand in their toes, taste the salt in the air. It was kind of like this, like, back baptism as they're, like, crashing into the water for the first time. And it's very beautiful. How did they grow and change as they began to go out and experience life? They slowly learned um, how to interact with people. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Where are you guys from? How? The only way I knew how to make conversation with anybody was, <laughs> do you like movies? Yes, I do. What's your favorite? I like this movie. Oh, I like that too. Learning the art of conversation and the art of movie making, Crystal teaches them about cinematography. Tripod. You know, the three legs. We'll do that. Oh, yeah. That's Govinda, one of the twins. His hair long, dutifully taking notes. And how do you review over what you're doing? There's something that's so open about them that you don't see every day when you're in New York City. Crystal films for nearly five years. A friend tells her the boys look like a pack of wolves and the nickname sticks. All the while, they become more accustomed to the outside world. What were the differences between what you had thought life was like from watching the movies and what you really experienced life as being? One, not everybody's trying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> in the movies, everybody understands what the other is saying and they have like a reply to it. But in real life, it's like, could you repeat the question? Could you repeat it? Like, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. And not, every, not everything's a plan, in other words, in life. And there, in movies... Nobody's, everybody's not following a script. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because everything moves slower. You need life to be edited a little bit better, right? <laughs> Their freedom brings transformation. The youngest, Jagadish and Krishna, changed their names to Eddie and Glenn. And four of the brothers cut off their long hair. So cutting your hair off was a rite of advancing. Of right. Like leaving it was, the past behind. It's like start like, okay, we're starting a new life. This is how I'm moving forward. Uh, Who did you see change the most over the course of the time you spent with them? I think their mother. Really? Their mother really broke free out of the situation that they're in and oh, it was it was very beautiful oh. to see that happen. I am not finding that place that has the donuts, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> You've gone from living where you never were allowed to go out unless Oscar said you could, to now going out every single day. Yes. Suzanne has changed her name too, from her last name Angulo back to her maiden name. It's very empowering and I feel now like I've, I've stepped back into how I really know myself. Do you have regrets? <clears throat> Do you wish that you had claimed that part of yourself sooner? In some ways I have regrets, but in many ways it's been a, a journey for me. And I feel like... It's been a learning process. And so I can't discount any part of it mm -hmm. because it's my life. And that would be like saying, oh, I wish I hadn't lived for those years, and I never feel that. Suzanne's biggest step, reaching out to the family she had cut off. In the documentary, she calls her mother. She hasn't heard her voice in more than 20 years. Well, I, I just, well, I just want to say that I love you so much, Mom. You know, I, I just love you so much. 
That was very moving. Yeah. That must have felt amazing to talk to her again. Yeah, I just am so glad to have her and my family in my life again. Next, Crystal's documentary debuts. How has your life changed? It's changed a great deal. And the Angulo brothers, once hidden away, find fame on the red carpet. Wolf pack. And a dream meeting. I have somebody I want you to meet. With a man who had been a lifeline for more than a decade, but never knew it. Stay with us. Twenty continues with Elizabeth Vargas and the Wolf Pack. I, I spent years running from what I, I really wanted. The documentary The Wolf Pack has been winning awards on the festival circuit, and the Angulo brothers have gone from seclusion to stardom. At ease on the red carpet, they're mysterious and brooding in magazines. The brothers, who once couldn't imagine speaking to strangers, no less girls, now pose with movie stars. One has a girlfriend. They really are so articulate and so charming and entertaining. You Just must be very proud of them. Yes. But one thing has not changed at all. After a night on the town rubbing elbows with celebrities, they return home to the same apartment that had been their prison. Their father, Oscar, still lives there. Suzanne remains married to him, but says he no longer makes the rules. Are things different now with you and your husband? Yes, our relationship was probably done like a 180. In our visits to the apartment, Oscar remained behind this door, unseen. This is my parents. That's your parents I think room? they're in there. He did not respond to our request for comment. The relationship between Oscar and his sons is irreversibly damaged. Only one brother now speaks to him. The others, like Naranya, are desperately saving money to find a way to move out. I have no interaction with him at all. As far as I'm concerned, he's dead. I'm trying to move out because living under the same roof just haunts me every second. Naranya's twin brother, Govinda, feels differently. I've grown to kind of forgive him because if I was always living in regret and just hating on the way things were done, I probably wouldn't be able to move on. 22-year-old Govinda is the one brother who has scraped together enough money to move out. Hello. Hi. He shares an apartment in Brooklyn with three roommates. This is sort of the general movie area. The wall was adorned by a poster of his favorite movie, Taxi Driver. De Niro, who was one of my all-time favorite actors. He says the film reminds him of how he used to feel before breaking out. All my life needed was a sense of some place to go. He was a loner because he couldn't interact with people. It was kind of how we were, when we would look out of our apartment, we would just like the sort of separateness right. of that. Right. It's a feeling Govinda has finally shed. Five years after he was scribbling notes on filmmaking, learning how to press record, Action. Govinda is now working as a cinematographer on his first independent movie. Now that we're on set and this movie's happening, it's sort of a surreal feeling. Almost I can't believe it. After years inside, all the brothers have been making up for lost time, eagerly pursuing their passions. Naranya works as an environmental activist. I spent a lot of time going to rallies, going to protests. Eddie, the second to the youngest, is an aspiring musician obsessed with 80s music. Bhagavan, the oldest, is a yoga instructor and a member of the New York Hip Hop Dance Conservatory. Two and a half years ago, if you asked me to dance, I would not do it. I was very self-conscious, so hip-hop dance just, it allowed me to be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And Mukunda is working as a production assistant. He's also directing short films. And action, Mati. This one stars his family. Look directly at the camera. Wave. Cut. That was good. Moving on. And all the brothers are still obsessed with the movies, what got them through the darkest times. So we decided to make a dream of theirs come true. We organized a lunch, making sure to hide what was really on the menu. A surprise introduction to a man who was their lifeline 
in those dark days locked in their apartment. Hey guys, I need all your attention for one second. I have somebody I want you to meet. Wolfpack, meet Robert De Niro. Their reaction, Oscar-worthy displays of shock. Robert. <laughs> Mr. Robert De Niro, it's an honor to meet you. Good Robert. Hi. <laughs> Makunda. <laughs> They're tongue-tied, starstruck. Naranya. We're just talking about you. <laughs> and after they sit to break the ice, Naranya asks the question Crystal taught them to use when they first started talking to strangers. What are some of your favorite movies? I like, uh, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, On the Waterfront. Uh, what's the one with Montgomery Clifton, Elizabeth Taylor? Oh, Place in the Sun. Place in the Sun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> seen more movies than I have, I'm sure. Just days before meeting Robert De Niro, the boys had actually filmed a tribute to him, dressed in character, down to the mole on his cheek, reenacting their favorite scenes. Get it out of here, right? I don't care where you got it, right, just bring right. it on back from where you got it. Get out of here, okay, I'm get out of here. Never rat on your friends, and always keep your mouth shut. You don't hear the word no very often, do you? I hear it all the time. It's a no, oh, please, no, no. Why didn't you make the payment last week? What are you talking about? I, mean, I made my payment last week. What are you talking about? You, you guys know the, the, the films that I've done better than I do, probably. That's right. <laughs> They're all smiles for their photo op, and for the wolf pack, a simple cheese won't do. Everybody say Johnny Emily. Boy. Johnny Boy. <laughs> Where's that from? Main Street. Once their idol leaves, Bye. the brothers erupt in joy and disbelief. Holy Please <laughs> get in here. Hey guys. Oh, you're right. oh I'm so glad I love you. You are so well going. Well I'm going to remember this <laughs> oh. forever. Next. Here we go. A cloud nine of a different sort. Hi, everybody. <laughs> And another pinnacle. You can do it. For the family to reach. Yes! <laughs> really a dream come true. Stay with us. <laughs> 2020 continues with the Wolf Pack. Here again, Elizabeth Vargas. Another impossible dream is about to take flight. The Wolf Pack brothers are boarding an airplane. Our camera's rolling as they begin their journey from New York to Michigan for an event more than 20 years in the making. We are all on our way to meet our family on my mom's side. We're all here. A family they'd only heard of, never met. Want the seatbelt signs on? Nervous, excited. It's all right. Five years earlier, this is what Makunda shared with filmmaker Crystal Mazel. Do you know who any of your relatives are? Never met them. How come? Because we've always been here. Here, in their cramped apartment, in which they were locked away for 14 years, the boys and their mother Suzanne cut off from her family for decades. I have not seen Suzanne for 23 years. They tried to find out because she, she was in no, no luck. It's overwhelming. Uh, we thought Suzanne was dead. The love has not stopped. And now, 2020 has arranged for everyone to meet. Here we go. Ready. 75 miles from Chicago, a first glimpse into their mother's past. So this is how you grew up, all yes. this land. So we used to play in woods like this and build forts. Their destination, a little town on the shores of Lake Michigan called Three Oaks. Its entire population is barely double that of the Wolfpack's housing complex. Suzanne's family has prepared a classic Midwestern picnic, tables loaded with food. They even made Wolfpack family t-shirts. And as the car pulls up, Yay! The enormity, the power of this moment is overwhelming. Shoot. What? Look at that, there's everybody. <gasps> Look at that. Where, wait, I can't Whoa. see it. Oh my gosh. Oh dear. Oh my God. That's a lot of people. The brothers who quietly endured so much to make it this far must gather the strength to take that final step. 
Bro, hold my hand. I need your hand. Oh my god. Okay. Let's go. Here we go. Okay. Hi everybody! Hi mom! Oh! Our hug's okay. <laughs> Ori and Jeff, they're from Chicago. He lives cousins. like, so that's my dad. This is my daughter Cheyenne. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Govinda. You all look alike to me. Yes, we do. Love the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> that's all him. That's me. All, him. all the way. You like Motorhead? <laughs> Motorhead, Twisted Sister, awesome. Rad. Well, new bonds are forged. There's your t shirt. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> It's official. Old bonds are renewed. Suzanne spots her older sister Joyce. Suzanne was her maid of honor at her wedding. Oh, I missed you too. I love you so much. They have 26 years of lost time to make up. Oh my gosh, you just don't know. I didn't know that. Then, a moment between Mukunda and his Aunt Jane. Hi, Aunt Jane. And Mukunda. Jane knows that none of this could have happened if Mukunda hadn't taken that giant step out of his apartment prison five years ago. A young man has a lot of courage. Mukunda, he in essence really kind of saved your sister's life. The whole family. He saved their whole life. What did you say to him about that? I thanked him for his courage, told him I loved him, and I was so happy to finally meet him. Like an explorer who's just discovered a continent, Makunda is equally overcome. Just taking it all in. Feels like a whole new world just opened up. As the reunion winds down, Suzanne returns with her kids to a monument of her own childhood, the sand dunes where she used to play. It is a steep climb to the top, but Suzanne has surmounted challenges much higher. This is what your life means right now, to get yeah. to the top. I'm here, yes, yes, nice job. yeah, yeah, wow. Even here, with the unmatched majesty of nature, Suzanne and the boys still rely on movies as their touchstone. You know what it's like, the last of the Mohicans? Do the movie references never stop? They never, <laughs> no, they don't. I used to talk to your boys about, let's pretend we're in a, on top of a mountain. Those big buildings might be other mountains. Now you're really on a mountaintop with your kids. Yes. <laughs> it's like a, a really a dream come true. <sighs> <Feels great. sighs> Finally. Yes. yes. I know a lot of people. You know, will wonder, are, are these guys going to be okay? I think we're going to be more than okay. I think we're going to be great. Answer, absolutely. You're so